Prosecco's! Poor Choices Kitchen, we're drinking Prosecco today as our poor choice, which is perfect because we are pairing it with some lobster, mac and cheese, a delicacy, a main meal. Uh, you gotta have a lot of money to make this a side dish, like eating lobster on the side and then eating something else. Well, I'm not in your tax bracket. But this is gonna be a fun recipe to go together. We're gonna to have our own cheese blend. Um, it's gonna be very familiar to our typical mac and cheese recipes. Here's just another one just to have a good time with. Starting out with just three lobster tails here. This is all I could find at the store. I wish I had some bigger ones, but this is an all. This is, this is enough of what we need to do today. And what I'm gonna do is just straight up put these on my grill at 300 degrees, which is preheating right now. And that's it. Once they turn red, hence red lobster, We'll know they're done and then we'll take them off and we'll start preparing everything else. But this first step is just as easy as putting on the grill and having a nice sip of some stuff. That's my grill finishing. I'm fancy. Our grill is up to 300 degrees. And for those of you at home who do not have a grill, in the oven at 300 degrees for 15 minutes. You can even, if you want to, cut the shells off, take the meat, throw it in a pan over some medium heat uh, with some butter and cook it that way. But I'm just gonna use the grill because I'm gonna use it anyways to smoke my mac and cheese later. So, again, nothing else done to it. These are just going directly on here. We'll make our cheese sauce, we'll throw our rigatoni pasta in there and it's gonna come together so good, yum. All right, we have got our lobster tails off the grill looking nice and ashy. Uh, actually, this is just because of my grill and some of the smoke pellets. Uh, we're not in the right place, so it's just a little ash. Ash never hurt nobody. All I'm gonna do, take my lobster tail, any type of knife that you got, find that last plate, put the point of my knife here, go through, and all the way down like that, boom. Then you should just be able to open it up pretty easily. And then we're just gonna extract that delicious lobster meat out of here. That's the problem with little lobster tails is the yield of meat isn't that much, but this is actually not bad. I'm not making a ton of lobster mac and cheese. I don't have that kind of money. And again, if you don't have a grill, you can still achieve the exact same thing in your oven. You can also boil these, and if you boil them, then you can take that leftover water and boil your noodles in it. All right, so back into the cutting board, I just wanna give us a nice little rough chop here. You can go as rustic, chunky as you want, or you can go as fine as you want. It is up to you. And then what I like to do here, since I didn't get a chance to do it while it was on the grill, I've just got some all-purpose seasoning. This is the Cattleman's Grill Trail Dust. Just gonna hit it with a good coating of that. If you want to just use salt and pepper, you can. If you wanna use some Old Bay, you can. While the lobster was on the grill smoking, I did my noodles, and I just wanna show you guys real quick what type of noodle I'm using today. Rigatoni, instead of normal mac and cheese. One, is because it has the ridges, so it's gonna hold on to that sauce really good, and two, because it has the tube. And so it's gonna hold more sauce, maybe even some of that lobster meat, so can't go wrong. Always good to change up your mac and cheese noodles. So now that I've got that in there, let us make our cheese sauce. Get out of here, fly. That's right. I'm acknowledging there's a fly in my kitchen. Uh, what I'm going to do real quick is get this up to a medium temperature. I'm excited because I'm using a really cool cheese blend today that I, I think is gonna be great. Um, this is mozzarella cheese, cheddar cheese, gruyere cheese, and pepperback. It's pepperback. Pepperback. And, right? And pepper jack. Um, I use about eight ounces each of each cheese just shredded. And I'm only gonna use half of this mixture initially in our cheese sauce and the other half is gonna go on top of it at the very end before we put it back on our grill. So FYI, experiment with your cheeses. I have got a stick of butter here. And yeah, pretty much we just wanna get this melted. And now I'm just gonna add one fourth cup of all purpose flour. And we're just gonna whisk it until it starts to smell nutty. And now I have 16 ounces of just some milk. I'm using whole milk today. And then what I wanna do is I'm just gonna whisk this occasionally until this begins to thicken up. And once it starts to thicken up, then we can start adding our cheese in. So let's give this about a minute or two, and then we will start bringing our cheese sauce together. We have got some bubbling action going on from our bechamel sauce, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So now that I've got that and it's definitely thickened up, I'm gonna start just taking handfuls of cheese and working it in making sure that it melts fully in before adding more. 
And as, as I mentioned earlier, I'm only doing half of this mixture because I want to save the other half. That wasn't slowly. Uh, I want to save the other half to top the mac and cheese with. And yes, this is all cheeses that I shredded. Uh, I will stand by my mantra that you got to shred your cheese for good gooey mac and cheese. And with that mozzarella in here, ooh, that's going to be even better. And then once all this cheese is melted, now I'm going to start adding a couple of other things in here. So first thing I want to add is the juice of half a lemon right in there. Uh, I'm going to add about two teaspoons of this all-purpose seasoning. I've got some Old Bake. And I'm going to go about half a teaspoon. And as I mentioned in another video, when it comes to mac and cheese, that little special ingredient is always going to be nutmeg. And you don't need a lot. So I've got me literally a fresh nutmeg right here. Mm. And I'm going to grate it right in here. And I'd say anywhere between an eighth of a teaspoon, depending on your tolerance for nutmeg, or if you want to go all out, you could even do uh, a half teaspoon. It's, it's up to you. And let's just give this a mix. And this is the cool part because you can taste this and see, do you want to add something else? So with our cheese sauce there, let me take my noodles that I made earlier. I'm just going to get it all mixed up in here. Star of the show here, our lobster meat. Go ahead and get that worked in. A little bit of cooking spray on my cast iron. Hey, that wasn't that bad at all. All right, we're just gonna transfer this to the cast iron. Everything's mixed up. Oh man, it smells good. Just taking a spoon here, just kinda evening everything out. Let's add the rest of our cheese on top. Oh, I've got some panko breadcrumbs. Uh, I'm gonna kind of eyeball the amount that I want to use. Panko right on the top. I love a good crunch, topping it with that parm. And then last but not least, just a little bit more of our seasoning on top, our all-purpose seasoning. This is pretty much it. <laughs> Again, the mess all around it is taking away from the beauty of this. But now we're gonna stick this back on our grill, still at 300 degrees, and we're gonna put it on there for about 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, we should be good to take it off because all we're really doing is just kind of melting all the cheeses and bringing everything together. All right, it has been 35 minutes. We have taken our lobster mac and cheese off the grill. We just want the cheese just to melt on top, and we've succeeded in that. And just a quick little recap. We crap, I said that. Just a quick little recap. Uh, lobster, just straight up out the bag onto the grill. We're using rigatoni because I think it's a fantastic R&B name and that's why I used it. Also because it has the ridges and the tubing so it can hold all those cheeses and meats. Um, and then we topped it with the panko. We threw it all together on the grill and it smells so good and I can't wait to try it. But before we do that, I put some on a plate. I just wanna take a little bit of chives. If you wanna use uh, parsley, you can but I'm just a little bit over parsley. So there's those chives on there for color and it wouldn't be Poor Choices Kitchen without me having a side of bacon and just topping it with bacon. That's right, this is now bacon lobster mac and cheese, but I did not put the bacon on the rest of it because we got people here who don't wanna eat it. Don't wanna eat delicious bacon. And there you have it. A main course meal, of course, paired with your Prosecco. If you don't like Prosecco, you can use any type of white wine, any type of white dry wine, like a, uh, like a Blanc or even a Pinot Grigio. It's up to you. Or drink a beer, do whatever you want. I'm just giving you suggestions. So without further ado, let's give this a try. I was trying to get that piece of cheese on your lip. <laughs> I knew that's what you were doing. That's why I was like, let me go ahead and just eat that real quick. That's delicious. So, what makes the mac and cheese is your cheese blend. And I fuck with that, that cheese blend. Only thing I would do is just add like some sausage or something in it. Just make it just a whole like land and sea meat thing. A surf and turf mac and cheese, which now that I said it out loud, it's not a bad idea. Poor Choices Kitchen. Have a good time. Shit. I'm gonna eat more of this. Ha, ha, ha.